My name is Jeff Hemingway. I'm the soil quality specialist here in South Dakota. And, and today we're going to actually go through our, our uh, so, uh, soil tabletop expo model. Uh, really, the, the model is really designed to do just this, is that really look at infiltration and macroport development uh, among soils uh, with different management scenarios. And, and it's a very simple model to run. We really like to do this, the, this model because of its simplicity. But uh, let me show you what we're talking about. Uh, first of all, this is our soil cutter. A four inch deep soil cutter, we can drive that into any field. You drive it down flush to the soil surface and then take a shovel or spade and actually remove the sample, slice it off along the bottom. So it's a fairly simple sample to pull. In addition to that, we actually have a no-till field that we actually cut a four inch sample out of. This field has been in no-till for 14 years in a corn, soybean, wheat rotation. In fact, we had wheat on it last year. It had a cover crop planted on it. And you can see the surface residues. You can also see, and we'll turn this over a little bit here so we can actually see the base. You can actually see that the soil is exposed on the bottom. You can see that we actually have some really good soil structure. We can see that we have some macropores that are exposed. We know that macropores are, are wormholes, those kinds of uh, biological activity. Really pretty good looking soil sample. Put that back down here and take a look at our conventionally tilled sample. Okay, as we take this apart and we look at our conventionally tilled uh, soil sample, what I mean by that is that this field was actually in no-till a number of years ago, and now it's actually been tilled up the last couple of years. Uh, we can actually see that by looking at this soil sample. Uh, one of the striking differences you can actually see here is that there's very little to no surface residues um, on this sample. And I'd like to flip this one over for you a little bit more, but the soil is fairly loose on the surface. But I don't know if you can see that, but as we start looking at the base of this sample, it has a, a very poor structure associated with, with, a, with the soil in the surface. So that, like I say, the whole idea behind this model is to look at water that is either infiltrating or running off soils, uh, the same soil in this particular case, different management scenarios. Uh, we'll just put it back together here. And uh, the whole idea about the model is its simplicity. Uh, you can actually see that it's designed that we're actually going to, in the sprinkler system here, you can see that there's holes in this tray above. We're going to actually move water back through that, that profile, sprinkle water onto the sample, have it either run off or infiltrate. Okay, let's just add water and see what happens. Okay, one of the first things we actually really notice is the amount of runoff and the very drastic amount, not just the amount of runoff, but the sediment that's associated with the runoff coming off these samples. You can see here that this sample has very little runoff coming off it at all. And this one actually has quite a bit of sample uh, runoff. This is our conventionally tilled. Because that surface residue is not protecting that soil surface, we end up with that process of detachment and transport of eroded sediments, that's that water erosion process. Very visual in, in this particular case where we see that very little runoff actually occurred. We had a lot of that water being infiltrated through this sample. And over here we had most of that water actually ran off and carried soil sediment. When we start looking at that difference between here and here, it's just, it's just really, really striking. Uh, that no-till scenario, we not only had very, very uh, well, frankly, very little to no sediment actually uh, being transported off and that water actually then was infiltrated through. We'll just take a look at that real quick here. Uh, these no-till sample here. As you can see again we talked about all that surface residue uh, before and if we turn over this sample and look at the base of this sample you can see that the bottom of the sample is very wet. Some major macropores where we actually have that water moving down through that soil profile. You can actually see some of those macro pores. And that water is infiltrated through that soil and would move down in the lower profiles being available for crop production. If you look at the tray, the catchment tray also, you can see that the amount of infiltrated water, 90% of it actually went through the soil sample and uh, moved into the tray below or would then have been moved into lower into the soil profile. Conversely, as we start really looking at our, our conventionally tilled 
sample. You can actually see here, first of all, the soil surface of how puddled that soil surface is and how much sediment that's actually moved off. You can actually see that, that we have sediment still remaining up in our funnel. And of course, in our catchment tray, we end up with a lot of sediment that's come off the sample. And if we look at the base of this sample, um, it's not, not wet at all. And in fact, if we start looking at the sample, you can see that we have dry soil clods. We had a little run over the side there. The water did not go through the soil profile at all. It's sealed off. And of course, that's pretty evident by looking at the amount of runoff we actually had up, up front also. So this is a really, uh, really um, very simple, convenient model for us to use, mainly because it's, 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 it's very visual. It shows what we're talking about as far as macropore development, aggregate stability, and surface residues, how they interact uh, to uh, really affect the amount of runoff and erosion we have on our landscape. So again, we really like this model, uh, very visual, and uh, it's a lot of fun to run this one.